put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Mariachi movie review. Asul is a small-time gangster who escapes from the prison where he's making a pretty decent living when his old boss, Moko, played by a deliciously hammy Peter Marquardt, who has the world's, one of the world's most awesome evil grins. And he stays at his mansion, getting waited on by a bikini-clad young hottie, like a boss. Anyway, he sends some men to kill Asul. Asul deals with them, and leaves the prison very easily. Apparently the police in Mexico, at least in some cities, are about as corrupt as the riot police during an OWS protest. He returns to his buddies where he himself sleeps with three chicks at once. Granted, they're pretty well covered, you know, they're, they're not exactly wearing lingerie, but anyway. And he decides to go around killing Moko's men until Moko decides to pay him his share from back when they were doing business together. And Moko, of course, has his people go out looking for Asul with the intent to kill him. Meanwhile, a mariachi, young, not terribly experienced mariachi, re yeah, arrives at the town. Excuse me. <clears throat> and he just wants to be a mariachi, like his father and his grandfather before him. And he has these almost meaningful, almost sort of thematic, narr you know, he narrates about how, you know, technology robs of, robs us of our culture, and, you know, no one wants mariachis anymore. I say almost meaningful because it never actually really amounts to anything. And, you know, he has trouble finding work. He's, in general, somewhat unlucky. He doesn't have a lot of money, and he's being plagued by these ominous nightmares involving the decapitated head of director Robert Rodriguez. Actually, that last bit is probably just because he recently watched one of the two most recent Spy Kids films. I'm told that that's a pretty common response to that. Anyway, he tries to find work as a mariachi in the town, but few will hire him. But he does charm his way into the life of Domino, who may or may not be connected to Moko. One more thing that I should really divulge as part of the plot, no one but Moko knows what Asul looks like, so when he sends his men out, they're just looking for a guy in black with a guitar case. And obviously Asul's guitar case doesn't actually have a guitar in it. And Moko's men do mistake the mariachi, who really is, in this entire trilogy, only referred to as El Mariachi. Yeah, they mistake him for a soul. So, yeah. This film is mainly notable for it 
surpassing or at least surprising surpassing the expectations of or at least surprising the people who see it or at least saw it by now it has its reputation so people know what to expect it was in part surprising because it was I believe it's Sundance where it was you know where it premiered so you know in indie film festival and it was an action film you know straight up genre flick N not this you know deep personal kind of movie and you know similar to Reservoir Dogs actually in that respect and that was where the you know Rodriguez and Tarantino met each other now that's part of it the other is that from it you know the, for it being an indie flick and for it being a first time you know it's it's his debut although it's obviously not the first film he actually did but it is the first feature that he released to the public and actually i think it is the first feature he ever made and it shows now with that being said you can't completely tell that this is a first time effort for a feature nor that it was shot on what is commonly referred to as a shoestring budget i believe he actually had like seven thousand dollars to shoot this film for and it does not look like that at all it can't necessarily quite pass for a hollywood production but it's certainly much more polished than you would expect for the budget Rodriguez got very lucky. He got to use a lot of locations and pretty much the entire cast is local people who just really appreciated, you know, being on camera and, you know, the acting does reflect that somewhat. Although it's usually not too, like, you know, horribly bad. It's just kind of not terribly impressive, you know. Now, yes, the, the production value is quite impressive, complete with, you know, squibs, guns going off, and, you know, stunt work, <laughs> which actually the people did themselves. And, you know, Rodriguez, a large part of what, how he makes this look as good as it does is that he truly understands and understood the importance of hiding what you can't do well or you know only doing what you can actually pull off well you know if you can't make something look convincing don't put it in your film right around it do some do something else you know and that's where a lot of filmmakers who do mess up their films go wrong you know that that's a, a lot of you know, realism fails and the like, or, you know, and credibility fails as far as what is visually, you know, convincing is due to, you know, they, they show something that they can't actually make believable visually. This does have some of the flair and visual style that Rodriguez is known for. He is first and foremost a visually impressive director. He can make things look good. He he is a less of a writer. Excuse me. Now yes that actually does bring me nicely into a closer examination of the plot. Like I said, it is essentially, the main conflict of the film is this case of mistaken identity. And yes, it could kind of be resolved by Moko giving a more detailed description than he wears black and carries a guitar case. I suppose you could argue that with the mariachi being a dying breed, you know, he did not expect, <clears throat> excuse me, for anyone else to be carrying a guitar case in town. However, 
the striking difference in appearance between Azul and the mariachi would be enough for him to just go by. It, it could be as simple as he had a mustache the last time I saw him. You know, he's, he's pudgy looking. He has, you know, somewhat tanned skin. You know, I believe both of the actors are Mexican or Spanish of of that descent, but yes, there there is a bit of a difference, you know. Now, furthermore, there's very little going on as far as kind of characters and you know interesting. I, I alluded to earlier. There's there's hardly anything thematically in this film. It really is just. You know, it's it's an action film, and not not terribly much else. You know, and and as such, it is impressive for what it is. But it's, I suspect once you've seen it once, you don't necessarily need to see it again. And it is not an action film that, it, especially by today's standards, but even back then. It can't quite compete with, you know, larger, more established action films, you know. And, and it is also important to note that when Rodriguez made this film, he did not expect it to be a success. He did not make it for some kind of recognition. He made it expecting it to just go straight to video in the Mexican market, I believe Mexican, Spanish, something. And he was, yeah, he was going to make a trilogy, and once he had made a little money from there, he would go to Hollywood and start his career. But this got, you know, discovered, uh, sort of, and, you know, when he made the sequel, both of the sequels, he got a budget, you know, and stars. So, yes, the... Now, with it being an action film, it is genuinely engaging and, you know, exciting. He does manage to... It's, it's quite well paced. Now, the movie is actually only, I think, roughly 80 minutes. I think 76, if you don't count the end credits. But even so, it could still, you know, move considerably slower than it does it really does move along quite nicely. You know, there's almost always something interesting going on. If, you know, if the plot is not moving forward, you know, little there is of a plot, or, you know, there isn't an action scene, then there's maybe character development or something. You know, the for all his troubles, the mariachi does, over the course of the film, seem to find some grounding in this small town, you know, he does eventually find work. That's really not a spoiler. And, yeah, you know, and the relationship between him and Domino does obviously gradually bloom. And there, again, you know, some something interesting. It is also in part a bit of a dark comedy with this very... You know, you can see it in some of his other films. When Rodriguez really lets go, as far as... I, I don't mean that in, in a negative way. I mean when he unleashes his style of comedy. It gets really dark, morbid, and frankly, weird. And, you know, some of the stuff in this is a little bit too strange. I mean... I, don't know, I might be overselling it, on, but just there are things in this that a lot of those of us who aren't from like Spain and Mexico might not necessarily find terribly funny or you know quite understand the joke. But with that said, there are some great jokes in this as well. There are some very nice universal jokes that you kind of just no matter where you're from, you might find this stuff you know, funny, and it's, you know, and, and it's done well, you know. It's, it's impressive how this really gets the timing and delivery 
kind of aspects of comedy down. Even with, you know, again, several of these people, most of these people had not acted before. So, and it also, while it, you know, sometimes just kind of completely goes into this warped kind of comedy, it is still a film that you can take quite seriously, and, you know, the, the ending especially is one that, you know, yeah, it, it does have some weight to it. The film has some quite good music, you know, both as far as just tension, and it, it has sort of this main theme, which is quite, you know, ominous and just very, you know, you, you feel like some bad stuff's gonna go down. And the, the mariachi music itself is quite, you know, pleasant to listen to. And, you know, the, the sound editing, I feel it really does deserve mentioning because the poor guy did it all, you know, he had to dub this entire movie after shooting it, you know, so he did really well. There's almost nothing that feels like the sound is too, that like the sound is off or the sound is misplaced, like, chronologically, like, there is like one bit I can think of specifically where the sound comes at a time where it doesn't seem like it should have come. Like it's off by a second or something, but that really is it. Now, I suppose that actually pretty well covers it. But yes, a, you know, a fun ride, quite tense when it wants to be. It flies by pretty nicely, but other than being impressed at... Well, yeah, there's there's really not a huge amount of reason to re-watch it or necessarily own it unless you yourself are a budding filmmaker and want some tips. You know, the DVD actually comes with the original 10-minute film school where Rodriguez gives a ton of inside tips, as well as the commentary track where he really just, you know, there's a wealth of knowledge on how to, you know, not everyone will actually succeed with it, but it's a lot of, if you want to try, he gives some great advice. In addition, you know, I personally own it just as a fan of him, and, you know, finally, if you want to learn Spanish, it's one of the better films because the characters tend to speak slowly and enunciate quite well, and part of this was almost definitely for dubbing purposes because it's a lot easier like that, but yeah, it it's good to learn Spanish by. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.